welcome, Regina. Thank you so much for taking time to be with us today. And I just have a few questions I'd like to ask you about your beginnings as an activist and your ongoing life as an act. What events or beliefs in your youth led you to become an activist? I'd like to think that uh, it started with me serving as a brownie in the Girl Scouts. Um, but both my parents have dedicated uh, lives of service um, as attorneys, both in the area of EEO, equal opportunity. But when thinking about Brownie, you know, you're supposed to do service for others and take care of those who are, you know, less able. And I see that as kind of an abiding theme throughout my life. And, you know, in high school, I worked with youth serving organizations. I did so in college. And while it was kind of a circuitous route, I found my way to this as a professional field and I had no idea it was like a thing. So I, I thank God for directing and, and creating divine paths and it's become my passion. And so there I am. Having found this path, what continues to motivate you and to guide you and give you courage? My motivation is a daily one. Um, I am connected at the hip to the young people that we serve at the East Oaken Youth Development Center, and quite frankly, to any youth. They don't have to be connected there, but that's been my, my first formidable focus. And I think the courage comes from the fact that no matter what gate uh, you start at in life, you should have an equitable opportunity to achieve your promise or, or you know, that typical American dream, right? And we do recognize that that is not the case. And so trying to fight for the rights of the poor, the disenfranchised, the young, the uneducated, the homeless, to be able to achieve a sense of normality, a sense of opportunity, and, and their pursuit of happiness and quality living. That's my passion and of course, we do it through a focus of character-based leadership and, and advocacy and, and positive identity formation, because we really want young people to be the very best grown-up people that we can have. You know, we see a lot of really bad examples. Do you have any hope in what seems to be a new resurgence of movement to justice and equity? A absolutely. One of the things that continues to give me joy is that 20 years ago, we started teaching our young people to march. And so in the unfortunate circumstance that has created the marching and the continuum of, of equity and better treatment by the police and just the unfortunate circumstances for the most underserved, which tend to be black and brown people, it's become a new awakening. But we couldn't have designed it better in the midst of a pandemic where people can't not see it. And so you have a bunch of people who are now um, shocked at things that they never saw before. And you are giving tacit permission, even to those black and brown people who have never been activated before, to say, you know what, now is my time to speak my voice, to share my truth. And it's permeating through the corporate. I've had lots of conversations with corporate entities. And within that, the CEOs who have a tendency to be white are, I'm saying you can't be the expert on this one. You actually have to listen to the subject matter experts of their own experience. That, that does give me courage and motivation. And I hope that it does, that it continues until real changes are made because we have a lot of folks that will talk, but not a lot of action is done. Throughout time when we've even talked about affirmative action, uh, the people who have been the voices to champion most of that in these systems have been white. And it's like, okay, or, or even, what do they call it, reverse racism? then, you know, it was the white female. And it's like, guys, if you really want to make change, ask people who are affected what they think would be suggestions. You know, it's kind of like in the youth development work. I'm always asking the kids, well, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? They are the subject matter experts. 
And I'm so proud of the activism um, muscle that has been uh, really worked and strengthened. Even, you know, as a, in my young people and in my staff, they are off to marches and protests and or, or just be having a, an opinion about it, which means that they are actively participating, even if it's just mentally or virtually. So yes. what advice do you have for youth activists? To be the power and demonstrate the courage and recognize that if they don't fight for themselves, they can't expect anybody else to fight for themselves because they are the best arbiter of what justice looks like for them. You know, no matter what decade we're in, now obviously there are lots of different focuses, right? But at the center always has to be youth voice and they have to remind us why it's so important. So I say, face your fear, be the motivation, be that voice, bring your friends along, talk to your families, however they are, you know, whether it's grandparents, parents, what have you, and share your opinion because all too often people don't want to give a center voice to young people. They think, oh, they're too young. They don't know. They're not paying attention. Oh my goodness. If I had to be a young person today, I don't know how I would operate. There are so many uh, hurdles that they've got to navigate. And that's whether they are from disenfranchised communities or in rural communities. I mean, you know, the circumstances around these systems um, are just so maligning now. And their own uh, safety can be vulnerable at the drop of a hat. Um, but I tell them to be fearless because they gain so much when they take those steps and they have the confidence to kind of amplify their voice. And they're amplifying their voices for the kids that are shy or more fearful or more vulnerable. It will oftentimes give them an opportunity to stand up a little taller or say, I want to go with you when you go to that, or to actually contribute with their own voices. Well, thank you so much, Regina. I really appreciate your taking time. And I certainly appreciate the work you're doing. That's really powerful and important. Thank you for asking me. And again, you know, we, we just appreciate and honor um, Rob Shutterly so much and appreciate the portrait and all that comes with just that acknowledgement. Great. Thank you.